All right, thank you for joining us today. We're going to be going over 1 Samuel 25 today. 1 Samuel 25, what I've been doing is just trying to cover a chapter uh, each week, and we see these Bible stories in here. Um, all these things literally happened, but God chose to give us, you know, there are, there are a whole bunch of things that happen in life that God could have put in the Bible, uh, but he puts these specific stories in here for us to learn uh, some, some things. It's like illustrations, you know, if, you, if someone tells you something, well, it may be hard to remember if all they do is give you facts, but if they tell you a story and then you can, you can relate to it, you're easier, it's easier to remember a story than it is if someone just gives you a bunch of facts. And so what God does here is he gives you a story, something that really happened, and it's here to teach us something. So we're in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25, and we know we've seen that uh, David has been running from Saul, and Saul's trying to kill him, but God keeps protecting him. And now in this chapter, we get a little break from the story, and we get to, we get to see his interactions with a man named Nabal, N-A-B-A-L. And I may not be pronouncing that right, but that's okay. Uh, 1 Samuel 25 and verse 2, it says, And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel, and the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. So that, uh, back then, you know, if you have farmland, if you've got the more sheep and goats you have, then the more rich you are. So if he has 3,000 sheep, you know, that's a whole lot. So it shows this is a rich man. And verse 3 says, Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. So basically what it's telling you is that Nabal is an evil man. He doesn't believe God. All he cares about is he's a very selfish guy. He just cares about himself getting all the riches he can in this world, and he doesn't care about the world to come, you know, what happens when he dies. He doesn't care about that stuff. And he's got a wife named Abigail, but it says she's of a good understanding and a beautiful countenance. So she, she believes God, and she's somebody who uh, recognizes that she's done some bad things, and she trusts in God to save her, to give her eternal life after she dies. But her husband isn't like that. So uh, you have a time here where David is, um, you know, remember that David had an army of people and they were fighting against the Philistines at a time. And you can imagine that you have 3,000 sheep. Well, sheep are, are dumb animals. You have to really keep close eye on them. They could run away very easily. They could get trapped in some barbed wire or they it's very easy for them to get in trouble so you got to have what are called shepherds the people who are over the sheep to take care of them so if you have three thousand sheep and a thousand goats that's a lot to take care of so you need a lot of people to watch over these sheep because you got to watch over every one make sure they don't get away make sure they don't fall into a hole make sure they don't get caught in a fence or something so you need a lot of people to watch over them and so here's david and his army and, he, of course, Nabal has this vast land and all these sheep and the shepherds. And so David had some of his men there to sort of protect them. Because remember, the Philistines were in the land, and they were trying to take over Israel. And so David, remember, God's anointed him king. And so David was trying to help out Nabal and uh, all his shepherds. And you see in uh, here and now, at this time then, in verse 5, it says, David sent out ten young men. So David, remember, he's been running from Saul. So he doesn't have a lot of stuff with him, so he needs some food. He needs his men to be taken care of. And he says, well, I'll go to Nabal because we've been trying to take care of his sheep to keep, uh, keep the sheep safe and his riches safe from the Philistines. So now maybe they'll feed me. You know, it's sort of like the idea if you have, say, an army and you're in a war and you're protecting your country. Well, if the people who you protect... Um, you know, it's reasonable to say, well, can you give me some food or something? My men are very hungry, so I need something. So that's what's going on here. David sends the young men to Nabal, and it says in verse 6, 1 Samuel 25, verse 6, David said, Thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, say to Nabal, 
Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds which were with us, we hurt them not, neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand, unto thy servants, and to thy son David. So, it's a reasonable request that David and his men have been protecting Nabal and his sheep and the shepherds. And so, uh, David says, well, can you feed my young men? Can you help them out? Because, you know, we... You know, we got, we got needs. You know, we need food. We need water. Uh, you know, can you help us out? And verse 10, Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So, Here's David's men been protecting Nabal and his sheep and his goats. And Nabal says, oh, I'm not going to give them anything. You know, who's this guy, David? So, you know, it's, it's like defiance. It's like if you had an army of American soldiers that had been protecting your city because it was going to be a, a war where another army was trying to come against it and they protect your city. And the soldiers say, hey, can you give me some food? I'm hungry. Well, of course you're going to give them food because they're the ones that have helped protect you. You wouldn't have the food if it wasn't for them. But here Nabal says, I'm not giving you anything. Who's this David guy? I don't care about him. And so then when David hears about that, well, now he's ready. Remember, he's got an army. So now David says, well, Nabal isn't a friend of mine. So since he won't protect me, I'll go against him. You know, he's turned to be my enemy because he won't even feed my soldiers. So verse 13, David said unto his men, Gird you on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff. So David sends uh, the army now who had been protecting Nabal and the sheep. Now he sends them against Nabal because Nabal won't even recognize who David is. Won't even feed his army. Now Abigail then hears about that. And someone tells her there in verse 14, it says, One of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us, both by night and day, all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. So, Abigail, Nabal does trying to do harm to David when David was there to protect him. So now David's going to come against Nabal and his people to try to you know, destroy them for being, on, being his enemy. But Abigail, Nabal's wife, hears about it. And so she says, well, I've got to make up for this. I've got to stop. I've got to protect my household, protect my husband, even though he's you know, an evil, wicked man. Um, I know that David, remember De Abigail is somebody that fears the Lord. She says, I know that David is a man of God, and so I'm going to try to help him. So in verse 18, in verse 18 it says, Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. So you can see... That, you gotta feed, you got to feed 400 men here. Remember verse 13, there are about 400 men with David. So you need a lot of food. 200 loaves of bread, two bottles of wine, five sheep, five measures of parched corn, 100 clusters of raisins, 200 cakes of figs. I mean, she's bringing a whole feast to David to feed his 400 men. And so she goes and... Uh, and, and so then... Uh, Abigail, in verse 23, she goes on a horse and um, comes up to David. I'm sorry, it's a, a donkey there. In verse 23, it says, When Abigail saw David, she hasted and got off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. 
and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thy audience and hear the words of thy handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal. Belial is basically a man of the devil is what she's saying. He's saying Nabal is an evil man. He doesn't believe God. And so he's a, a wicked person. So Abigail is saying, basically, don't punish me and my household because my husband doesn't believe God. Abigail fears the Lord. She's recognized she's a sinner. She trusts in God to save her. Nabal is an evil person, doesn't regard God. And so Abigail is asking David for mercy, knowing that David is a man of God. And so he, she says in verse 18, I'm sorry, verse 28, in verse 28, Abigail says to David, I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Notice in verse 30, that even though Saul is still the king of Israel, uh, Abigail believes the Lord, and she knows that the Lord has already anointed David to be king. And so in verse 30, she recognizes that. Abigail says to David in verse 30, And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee. So you can see Abigail recognizes that although Saul is considered the king, she knows that David is a man of God, that God has made David king. So she already knows that he's going to be the ruler over Israel. And since he's the Lord's anointed, then Abigail, because she fears God, wants to help out David. And she asks for forgiveness for what her husband has done in trying to come against David, not blessing him. And so based upon that then, you see in verse 35, in verse 35, it says, So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. So, everything's fine with Abigail now. He's not, David's not going to kill uh, Abigail and his family, and her family, and everybody be safe. But remember, Nabal is an evil man. And so, although David isn't going to kill Nabal, uh, the Lord will. Because in verse 36, it says, And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore, she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. So you can see Nabal is an evil guy that uh, he doesn't care about David. Even though David and his men have protected them, he doesn't give them any food to eat. I mean, when somebody comes into your house, you know, as a guest, normally you'd say, well, can I get you uh, something to drink or maybe a little snack or something to eat? Um, and that's somebody who hadn't done anything. They just came to your house. So as a guest, you try to treat them nicely. But here's David and his 400 men who have helped protect um, Nabal and his possessions and his family and his sheep. And... Nabal won't even give them anything. You know, surely they should get a meal. But Abigail is the one who feeds them. And so because Nabal is, doesn't believe God, doesn't fear God, doesn't accept David as God's anointed, then uh, verse 37 says, It came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him and became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after that the Lord smote Abel, uh, Nabal that he died. And so you may think, well, what is, why does God give us this story? You know, it's a nice story to hear, but why, why are we told about David um, asking for food from people he protected, that Nabal is an evil guy, but Abigail comes through, gives him the food, and then God smites uh, Nabal and kills him? Well, and all this stuff really did happen, but it's really to give us a picture of, of different uh, things that are in this life, spiritually speaking. That Nabal represents the person who doesn't trust God. He's the evil, wicked person. And so, no matter what you've done in this life, he ended up being very rich. So a lot of people probably catered to him and respected him because he had a lot of possessions. But yet, in the life to come, 
because he never recognized his sin, he never trusted in God to save him, then as a result, he dies and he loses his possession. So he's there, Nabal is there to show us a person who um, doesn't trust in God. And Abigail here, Abigail is somebody who trusts in God. So she has a rich husband, but herself, you know, being a woman not having those possessions, the possessions would be in the, her husband's name. And so she doesn't really have a lot in this life. She's married to somebody who is uh, not, he's evil, wicked person. So she doesn't have a good lot in life, but yet um, she pleases the Lord. She trusts in God to save her. And at the very end, you can see it says uh, down in verse uh, 40, in verse 40, it says, The servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel. They spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. So now she's going to be the king's wife, David's wife. And that's a type of how when we recognize that we've done some bad things and we trust that Jesus died, was buried and rose again to save us from our sins, then God gives us the gift of eternal life. We may not have a lot on this earth, but in heaven, we'll have great riches. So Abigail is there to show us as somebody who is a believer. And Nabal is a type of someone who's a wicked person. So they may have all these wealthy things, and you may know people like that. You may envy some rich kid who say, well, I wish, you know, I had a nice house or all the toys I wanted and all these things. But it's better to have life in heaven than to have trust in the riches of this world. And that's what this is teaching us. And David here is a type of Jesus. Jesus is the one who saves us from our sins and gives us eternal life in heaven. And David saves Abigail from this evil man by marrying her. So um, all these things literally happen, but it's a lot easier to understand you know, what, a, what happens to the wicked person versus what happens to the believer when we see a story like this. So we're out of time. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross for our sins. We pray that you will help us just believe your word and not trust in riches of this world like Nabal did, but just trust in you and the things of heaven. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.